I definitely want to talk about the new Obvi product. Yeah, because there's a lust. <laughs> lust. Even though your girl is not having any sex. Not, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. I don't know how I feel about having sex. Ooh, sex we're going to find else. out this yeah. episode. Because yes, you're going to have to dive deep on that one. That's what she said. Is there any light in that thing? No. There's going to be so many that's what she said oh moments God. in this. She gets one. <laughs> I feel like this one I'm allowed to have more. It's mine. Just saying. <laughs> no. You can have the one. Guys. You can have the one. Do you see the new merch? Do you see this? I can love this. Uh the sweater right now like I'm like dying look at this I love this sweater how amazing is that that's I'm so impressed because it's my brainchild that is yeah. on this sweater so those of you that are listening Kelly fully described this logo to our tattoo artist and this is what came out so go on to patreon be a member you get to see this episode yes. um because it's, it's badass it and is badass I'm liking this because I, I have a white sweater and I look fucking good in white yeah, you do. I didn't realize. Like, I like white, but I'm like, oh my god. You need court. to get like, oh, you're like well, spilling our tea. What the fuck is going on with you right oh, now? There we go. This nice. is what happens when Melanie gets high before we record an episode. Not true. Not true. It is true. It's totally true. <laughs> you okay. know, it's still weird to not have a ring on. Like, is it? It's very weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think it's your your turn. I think it is my turn. Because I think I brought us in on Ethan's. You did. Which, if you haven't listened to Ethan's... Go stop what you are doing and go listen to it right now. Because it is fucking fabulous. We love him. Yes. We do. I mean, go listen to all the episodes. But especially that one. Well, and that one's fun. But It is fun. All like right. It. Oh, hold on. Oh, Okay. You good? Yep. I thought I was my... Hold on. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get this, like, situated right now. Like... Gotta get comfy. Get comfy. I'm messing when, with my hair. When Eric redoes this, um, nice. we need him to put, like, a floor or something that we can roll on. Oh, you don't want the carpet? No, I I'm, I like the carpet. I just... I So the carpet's I'm like, ugh, ugh. Yeah. Well, we need better chairs. Really, really is the deal. Can you guys go spend send us lots of money? We're gonna do a GoFundMe just for our studio, studio chairs. Studio chairs. Yes, or whatever they're called. I don't know. I don't know. Rolly chairs, office yeah. chairs. Because the point of because even in like big studios, they have carpet all over the floor because it it takes the sound. So uh, okay, so it fine. needs to be there. It's just like how do we make it better? But typically in those studios, you just you're you're standing. I don't like standing. Well, we don't have a real studio studio like him. Yeah, and can you imagine standing for that long? No. I used to remember in the beginning of this. She did. It was fun. That's a true story. It's true. All right, so I'm going to bring us in. Okay. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Let's prolong this even more. Yeah, because I'm not ready for this shit. She's ready, but not ready. Where are the... What's she doing? Oh. Oh, that's not going to do anything. Yes, it will. My my tea doesn't condensate, so the water doesn't get anywhere. Yeah, but it's the sound. You think so? Yeah, when you put it down, it's all dunk, 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 dunk. Okay. Welcome back, OSLP family. Welcome. Yeah, I'm so excited for this episode. Yeah. This is so much fun. But before we start it, this is Mel. And this is Kelly, and you're listening to Our Sleeve Live podcast. That's right. We kind of like got ahead of herself instantly. Um, Melanie did. I did. She got ahead of herself because sex is one of her favorite top to topics in the entire world. It is not my favorite topic. I would say it's just something that no one likes to talk about but wants to hear about it. Or it wants to, it wants to talk about it, but they just don't. There's like a taboo around sex. A taboo? Yeah. Well, yeah. That makes sense. Cool. And it's quite annoying because a lot of other countries don't have, like, the whole body shaming as much as we do in Correct. America. So, Correct. like, 
they are way more open sexually. Yes. So. I w- I'll give you that. I'll yeah. give you that. I'm trying to get my mic right. You're fine. You're okay. totally fine. So that's where, like, I come from because I'm like, I want, I want to talk about it because I know it changed for me. Like, it, ta- it changed for me, not necessarily in a good way. Well, you're just going through, yeah, you're going through some stuff. Yes. So we'll get to that because the whole point of this is like post-op, you have one sex drive like that you know what it is. Like yes. whatever it is for you, that's what it is. Yes. But the deal is that after, all of a sudden you lose weight, you feel great, like things are small, like things are smaller so you can do other things in bed and it's just like, holy shit, like you didn't think that you could be able to do or like, you had no idea that you're going to like these Because you were comfortable in your straight missionary. Well, not just missionary, just of like, you could only do certain things, you know, like in that size. Yes. Yeah. So that's. I, I, okay. You guys, I'm not sure about this episode. (laughs) I'm not sure what I'm getting into right now, but Melanie is leading me here and that's fine. I am leading her. Yes. yes. This is going to be a predominantly like, Melanie episode. I don't think so. Because I'm going to interview you, basically. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, you're leading me. Lead yeah, me because, down this Because there's a lot of things path. about you that I don't know. So Sexually? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, why would I really? I mean, I do, but don't. Like, we don't ever talk about really sex much. I mean, we do, but not, like, in depth. Not in depth. No. No, because I've had different, because I think every girl's different in their own, like, um, privacy with that stuff, mm-hmm. I guess. This is the thing. Everybody has their own tolerance. And mm-hmm. so, like, yeah, you've just never, me and you have never really talked about sex. Just the fact that we have sex and we make random sex uh, joints. Obviously, jokes, yeah. But that's and, about it. Oh. Uh-oh. I just bumped that mic. I think mic. Um, you need to turn me down. So I'm going to, I'm going to pause this. Right? Stop? Nope. Pause. Pause. Okay. Because okay. I'm... Look at look at my markers now. Like, I'm hitting really high ones. You can't see it now because it's paused, but... No, I can see it. Yeah. I'm normally not that loud. I was redlining. What'd you do to yourself? I think I turned mine just as much as yours. <laughs> well, that was a I bad idea. I don't need to do that. This is... Again, this is what happens when Melanie gets high before we record an episode. I'm actually louder than you. Is what it is. Yeah, and you are not louder than me. So there's that. Yeah, so like me relating is weird. But at least when people they get to see this part, air. Our patrons. Yep. Show off the sweater, man. If you're going to walk in, show I off know, the sweater. Sorry. sorry. Like y'all's. Yeah. Awesome. It looks so good. And it's so comfy. So comfy. Nope, that was fine. Nope, that was not. You're you're on the other side. There we go. Yeah, our cords are on the inside. So mine's always on this side. Yours is always on that side. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, because it feels weird if it's on the other side. I don't know why, but it does. Oh, I just felt, well, this is, it has an L right here. This is your left ear. It's supposed to be on. So whatever. So you have it on backwards. I always have them on like this. Yeah? Yeah. How's it feel? Just feels weird. Well, then don't do it. It's fine. But I'll this, try it this time. Maybe your ear won't hurt afterwards. They already hurt. They already hurt. It's because I need my new ones so that they're like... We need to ask Eric about the... About your headset. Yes, we do. Okay. Back to the episode. And we're back. Okay. So, now I feel like... Is that working? You yeah, but I, I feel like you're... Now I'm, like, really low. No, you're about the same. You think so? Project, Melanie. Project. I am projecting. Like, that's Yeah, not... yeah, you're fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're the same. We're the same. Okay. I don't so, like So, okay. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's okay, way too we're low. paused. I just moved my mic way too much. We're the exact same. Yeah, we shouldn't be. Well, don't we want him to be exactly the same? 
No, that's really, that's my. That's yours? Yeah. Maybe that's why it's like spelled backwards. Bloppity blop. Yeah, you turn me like way up. Turn me down just a little bit. That's perfect, yeah. Yeah, because I can hear like the static or whatever when it goes too loud. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I can still hear myself, so let's see. All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Alrighty, there we go. That's so much better. Okay, see how much like spikier they are. Spikier, They're spikier, spikier. Okay. I don't know why we look up there. There's a screen right in front of us. I, I know. We're just so used to that one. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Okay, um, okay. So, sex, sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Maybe not you and me. We are. Just well. Ha. <laughs> yes. Yes. So. I would say, okay, I'm just going to go tell you what my experience was. Okay. And then you can tell us your experience. That sounds fantastic. To okay. Me. So I would say for me, all of a sudden, like I would say year, right at the end of like year one. Okay. So right before I hit my one year, I guess. Okay. Like nine to 12 months. I noticed that my, like, I wanted to have sex more. It more is, than before. More than before. Okay. Like I noticed it went from like oh my God, I want to have sex right now. Like I felt it and it was really weird because I'm like, oh, this is what horny feels like. 100%. Like I didn't know, yes. like I was now like super aware of what horny feels like. And I was like, holy shit. Like, okay, this is awkward. Um, well, why is it awkward? Well, because I feel like sex, having a sex drive is a good thing. It is. But like, I always like to have sex, but it was interesting having that urge and like how like intense the urge was. Because mm. it was almost like, I need to have sex now. Like, or where I'm going is, to fucking flip this I table. like, where is Eric? Like, where, what is going on right now? <laughs> like, it was kind of ridiculous. So like, I noticed when I, I would say around nine months to 12, and that's when the sex drive kicked. Okay. Um, but then like, I didn't know how to tell Eric that. Like, well, because you don't really talk about that. I mean, unless you... I mean, we do now. Like, yeah, we do all the time But now. before, mm -hmm. you didn't... I mean, that communication line was not open. No, not at for all. For that. Like, you I'm, had sex. You enjoyed sex. But you don't sit there and have a discussion about it. Mm -mm. No, and when I was really uncomfortable in my body, so it was really mm -hmm. weird to, like... I would never tell him, like, oh, I don't like that or I do like that. Like, it was just, mm -hmm. like, this is what we're doing. I mean, it works. Like, I, I always, like, came to the point, but it was still, Can like, <laughs> I knew it. I didn't know how to say it. So That's like, what she said. So, like, when I would, I would always orgasm, so it would be fine. But yeah. the deal is, is that, like, now being smaller, like, oh, I can do more things and mm -hmm. I like more things and I can actually, like, get off quicker now. Yeah. Like, because now I know more about my body. Well, I think Sorry. getting to know, knowing your body Turn off her phone. Turning it off. Ringers off. Um, the I think knowing your body is a is a point, mm -hmm. but also having sex and knowing what you want. Yeah, is new. Explaining that to your partner and yeah. then doing that. Of course, you're going to get off quicker. Yeah, because they're getting what they're giving you what you need. Yeah, like and what you want. Now they can like now they have some like attainable. They're like, oh, okay, this yeah. is what you need. Easy like peasy. this is what I want. Didn't know it was that easy. Like Eric was actually like, why didn't you tell me this stuff sooner? It's like, oh, because I was bigger and, and I, I was uncomfortable. Was uncomfortable. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not comfortable having that conversation, even in like that kind of skin because I'm I didn't know why he would even I know this is going to like get sad for like a hot second but it's just like I didn't know why he would even want to have sex with me because I, I didn't like what I looked like mm -hmm. so why would I have the conversation like I want you to do these things but I also don't like my body so why would I want you to do those things mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to do those things so like now I really enjoy my body I like my body mm -hmm. and so now I'm like hey you want to do that <laughs> I saw this on Marco today <laughs> or on Marco oh, Marco I bet TikTok. Oh, TikTok today. I saw this on TikTok today. Let's try it. Yeah. No, I think that's really good. It's funny because I had the almost the exact opposite situation. Yes. Yeah. 
So I feel like my sex life was always good before. Okay. And I was very open about how I was feeling and what I wanted. I always had great sex with my ex. And then as soon as I had surgery and I started losing weight, I kind of lost my identity. Mm -hmm. Especially when it came to like a sexual identity. Yeah. Because you do. You have your identity for like normal world. And then you have your sexual identity. Yeah. And those are the things that you like. And I feel like I was always more comfortable because I knew what that body looked like. Okay. Yeah. And now I don't, I don't, I, I feel the exact way that you did before. Yeah. Like, I don't understand how you can find this attractive. Mm, mm-hmm. Even okay. though I know I'm smaller. Yeah. I know I look good now. You do look good. But when I look in the mirror, fucking body dysmorphia once again, yeah. I don't, I see every flaw right. that is there. Yes. I don't see the fact that I've, you know, gained this whole, like, attractiveness like I felt like I didn't know what how I was attractive Mm -hmm. attractive to him well and also I remember we had conversations where like because you would tell me these things and Mm -hmm. then it's like it's hard to know Mm because like it took a while to know but I think also your partner has to be a part of that journey yes because like I feel like compliments help Compliments are a, so if you're listening to this and you are with somebody who had weight loss surgery, give them compliments. And give them touch. And it doesn't have to be sexual touch. This is what I've learned. I did do the five languages. I, I did, I didn't read the book, but I took the test. Yes. And Eric was like, I'm not taking a test. Like I can just, he read them like Mm -hmm. the, what each one was. And he's like, yeah, I I know what I am. (laughs) And we just talked about it. Yeah. Because like mine's touch and I just need someone to like. Just touch me. Yes. They can just, like, hold my hand or just have their body on me. That way I feel like they're there and secure. Mm -hmm. And for him, he likes likes more, like, acts of service. Mm -hmm. So, like, doing things. Mm -hmm. So, like, the fact that, like, I... I do put all of the laundry away. I do all, all, all of that stuff. Like, yes. And he really appreciates that because he's like, that means that you care. So, like... That's his love. Everybody, love like, language. is a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had to learn that because I was like, I don't I don't feel right. I don't... I didn't want... I need you to touch me. And he was just like, what? And I'm like, I need you to touch me. <laughs> and he's like, I can't have sex with you all the time. And you heard him even today. Yes. Because we're yeah. going to try this... Um, so for, it's like a protein powder, right? No, so it's a pill. Oh, it's just a pill. Yes. So it's a it's from Obby. Mm-hmm. And if you guys have been watching our stories and our lives lately, we have fallen head over heels in love with Obby. Yeah, they their just products taste are really amazing. Good. They taste so good. That's like the deal is like that's a deal breaker for us is aftertaste. Yes. And then like the actual full flavorness. Yes. And Does it match shit. what it's saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we actually got a sneak peek of what's coming for Valentine's Day. Ha ha, get it coming. <laughs> um, and it is called Lust. And right. it is a woman mood libido enhancer. Yes. And for me, where I lost my sex, my sex drive. Yeah. Like, I don't know where it went, but it's Clearly not on. anywhere on my person like <laughs> no idea where it, it went it doesn't even like pop in your brain I mean it does okay. but it's just like the drive is not there got you and I have been like a lot of times I'm like oh it's because of my pills but I've been on my pills for my autoimmune diseases for years yeah for a long time and I've never felt like this never felt this like just after surgery this was after surgery yeah. and I feel like it was really mainly after my first year hit okay Like, it was definitely, like, trying to figure out where I stood. Mm -hmm. and But as I was losing weight, I still, like, mainly saw me. It was when I lost all of my weight that I think I kind of lost that a little bit. That makes sense. I I hope this is making sense. Yeah. Because I'm kind of just feeling my way through this. That's fine. Um, No, that makes complete sense. Because also, like, I think, um, like, Cody seemed to me to, like... Like, he wasn't showing you, like, the attention. Not the attention, but, like, yeah. The, the, the care. Attention, the care. Like, there yeah. was no, like, verbalness with you. So, mm-hmm. like, you were stuck in, like, looking at the old body. Mm-hmm. And then he wasn't complimenting you, so it kind of kept you in that old mm-hmm. body even longer, I think. Yeah, because I feel like the only time, it, it like, compliments came out were if I asked. So, if I said, does this look okay? Yeah. 
how do I look? Right. Like, it was, like, me prompting. Mm -hmm. And I need somebody that's going to look at me and be like, damn. Yeah. Like, like, into you. You look or hot. Yeah. Or, you know, you look great. Like, something, you know, like, I want that heat, that, like, I can't keep my hands off you type of feeling. Right. And I think that's what scares me a lot is that I don't know if I'm going to get that feeling with anybody else. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, I think that you will, like, no matter what. Yeah. Um, like. Well, it worries me because I lost so much of my sex drive of, like, I, I, it's there. Like, it's in my brain. Right. Like, I want to, but I don't want to. Well, it's going to be a while. And, like, maybe this less stuff can work. Like, yeah. that's what we're going to try. Well, Melanie's going to try. So, because it's going to be Avi15 is the code for them. But I'm going to try their lust. OSLP15? What did I say? Avi15? Oh, I totally did. OSLP15 is our code. There you go. Them. So, I'm going to try the lust one. And what I was, what we were getting at, too, was the fact of, like, Eric was like, you do not need that. Like, because mm -hmm. he seemed to think, I, I told him, I was like, you act like I want to fuck every day. That's not how this works. But I do not want to fuck every day. Yes. I just want to fuck every other day. Every other day. I feel like that's not too much to ask. No. No. So, we're going to see what happens with this lust stuff. Yeah. Cause I I'm think like, that's... But also, what the deal is with him is the touch part. Because, like, he was trying to understand, like, touch doesn't mean sex, everybody. Like, that's the it deal. Does not. And so, for him, he was, like, trying to equate, like, okay, what does she mean exactly by mm -hmm. touch then? Like, and so I had to, like... And he actually asked me, he's like, I need to understand, like, what kind of touch that you're wanting because... I think you just want to have sex. I'm like, that's not at all. Like, I want you to hold my hand mm -hmm. or, like, just have your body. Like, literally your leg could be on me while we're watching TV. Yeah. And I just want to be intertwined with you. Like, I just need to I have that. I want to be intertwined Basically, with you. yeah. I like that. I totally do. I just want I to, like, do. I want to put my feet with your feet, you know, hands with hands sometimes. Like, we don't always have to be You want to feel connected. Yeah. And your connection is through somebody just... Touch. Even if the, the hand is on your shoulder mm -hmm. or arm around your neck yep. or you just want that, like, you want to feel connected to them through physical touch. Physical touch. Because I feel like that means that you're connected with me. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't touch his. I realize, like, actually going out into the world and being, like, when I went on my business trip, mm -hmm. I'm a hugger. And I did not realize yeah. how much of a hugger I am because I'm hugging people that don't know me. And I'm realizing that I'm crossing some boundaries there because some people don't like to be touched. Yes. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm realizing, like, oh, I like, that's how I feel connection with someone is, like, I show you, hey, I'll, I will touch you. That's how much I'm okay with you. It's kind of like my thing. <laughs> Watch out, people. So. She's going to touch when you. When we see you in person, I'm just as much as a hugger. Yes. But always ask. <laughs> but always ask, especially during COVID. Yes, 100%. But that's oh. my, yeah, that's my jam. But I had to, like be comfortable saying these things to Eric mm -hmm. and because I realized I, I didn't verbalize any of this before so that was a thing for him he's like so what did he even we were cooking dinner I do a lot of our talking while we're cooking dinner yeah which I feel um, like is a really big part of talking about big issues is like yeah. n not necessarily staring at each other in the eyes no. and having a conversation it's while you're doing the normal day-to-day -day things yeah Cleaning, cooking, you know, though I feel like those are when the best conversations happen. Well, because you kind of get them like thinking, because like, because mm -hmm. I do the same thing when he brings it up why I'm cooking or cleaning. I'm like, oh, like I start thinking about it and then I process it and then I can actually give a good answer because mm -hmm. his question was, is like, if I came to you and asked you for all of these things, what would you do? And I looked at him and then he goes, never mind. And I was like, what? And he's like, you would just do all the things. Yeah. And I was like, I would do all the things. Yeah, because I feel like, like it's not too much to ask. Well, because I, I want to do these things. Mm -hmm. Like, I just didn't know that you wanted to do these things. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how I've learned with Eric and why I feel so connected with him is that we do talk a lot. You do. Your, your conversations and your communication mm -hmm. is, like, so much further than most people's. You like, think so? Uh, coming from somebody who's going to be divorced, mm -hmm. who we did not have good conversations. Like, yeah, that's true. We did not communicate. And me, I was totally fine. Like, I, I was totally content laying in bed watching TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We didn't necessarily need to be talking 24-7. No. But watching you and Eric, like, you guys talk. Yeah, we're best friends. Like, yes. We, and I know people are like, 
that's so stupid, whatever. They can't no, be your I best don't think friend. That, no. And it's like, I don't mean it as like my best friend, my best friend. I mean it as like, I married my friend where like, I want to hang out with you. Yeah. Like, that's what I've always thought you were supposed to do is mm -hmm. like, find someone you like to hang out with for a long period of time. Because guess what? You're, You're gonna be stuck. <laughs> You're stuck forever. Right? So like, do the things with it. That's why I get confused when people are like, don't move in with someone mm -hmm. before they get married. Because I'm like... Oh, that changes the whole person and how who they are. Oh, one hundred percent. Like I am a firm believer of like you should probably live with them and go on a road trip. Go yeah. on one more road trip because road you, trips are telling. Very eye opening mm -hmm. because like I remember my parents would fight on road trips mm -hmm. and Eric's family fought on road trips. And when we took our last one, when we went down um, for our anniversary, you we, didn't fight at all. We didn't fight one time, and that was the longest car ride we've ever done. And even when I asked it, and I says like, "Hey, I have to pee." He would just pull over and make sure I could go pee. Mm. Like, and he was like, why are you wait? Because I'll wait. And he's like, why are you waiting to last and tell me I have to go pee? I'm like, I am so used to, like, family road trips of, like, mm -hmm. you had to hold that shit. Like, so I thought, I just assumed he was just going to be mad at me for asking to go pee. That's he's funny. like, I'm not going to be mad at you. Like, you can't control that? And I was like, thank you. Like, I didn't, I'm so used to, like, even those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't even realize it until you have them. So, guys, talk to your people. Like, talk, have fun with them. Talk. Like, yes. Like, because they're a whole different person, I think, if you don't talk. Oh, yeah, I mean. Right? Like, because you never know what's going on up in that head if you don't talk. Exactly. I mean, I'm going through that right now. Mm -hmm. Like, half of the shit, I had no idea was going on. Like, I may have had, like, had off-handed comments or something. Right. But I didn't know that it was as serious as it was. Right. And that's why I was so blindsided by what was going on was because I didn't think that it was anything like... You didn't think it was... I didn't think it was bad enough to walk away. Right. You know? Like, I didn't think that it was going to be that... Like, I didn't know that it was this bad. Yeah, you had no clue. Like, so if None you would, of us had any clue. Right? And if you had sat down and had a conversation and said, these are the things that I cannot deal with any longer. Yeah. If these things don't change, I'm done. Like, oh, totally. That would have been a good conversation to have before you're like, And those are tough, out. tough conversations they to are. have. Because, and I've had them. Yeah. Those are not fun conversations. No, but they have to they happen. They have to happen. Because, like, I know I used to be, so I... Some more information about Melanie. That fun fact, fun Melanie. fact of Melanie of like I used to follow Eric around when we'd argue. Yes, and I learned like he had to tell me stop that because it just makes things like go up and up and up. Well, then like I would hold stuff in to where like it would be like that big blowout fight like once that was every like hours long. Yeah, and then yeah, it'd be once every six months. Like that's mm -hmm. what was like our uh, our thing for a little Your while. pattern for like a couple of years. It was like that. And then it's because I wouldn't tell him what was going on in my head. Mm -hmm. I would wait till like the last fucking minute to do so. So now mm -hmm. he's like, "You have to tell me when it happens." When it happens, he's like, mm -hmm. and I go, "Well, well," I was like, "I don't want to do that for in front of people." And he's like, "No, that's fine. Like, you can wait till we get in the car, till mm -hmm. we're at home. Like, I I have to know." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "He's like, because I can't do anything until I know what's going on." Yeah. So I took it to heart. I didn't, like, I thought maybe, like, he was just BSing me. I was like, no, no. way. And he was for real. I was like, yeah, like, just tell me. Well, yeah. Just I mean, if somebody does something. So this is kind of what we've discovered. Like, when you have fights. Yeah. And you don't deal with the issue. It piles up. Yes. Right? On so it just. Yeah. So then there, this fight is about something. And then, but you're not healing from that. Mm -mm. So then you're having another fight about something else. And then that piles on right. top. And it's just continually piles on top of each other mm -hmm. because you're never dealing with the original. My hands are like flying Waiting. all over the place today because <laughs> um, you're not dealing with the original issue. Right. And if you're holding your emotions in for six months. Yeah. Like that's an explosion. It's an explosion. And we would, I would have that happen. Like Cody and I would have these huge blowout fights and it would be about stuff that happened months ago. Oh, to mine would, a lot of mine is sex. Cause mm -hmm. like Eric's not, and he knows this about himself. He'll mm -hmm. tell you straight to your face. He doesn't need to have sex with you to have a connection. Yes. Like he's like, I love you for you. Like, I don't give a, f like if we didn't have sex anymore, I would actually be okay with that. Like, 
I, I want to just hang out with you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, I need to have sex. I am not okay with that. I am not. We I will need to have sex I, more. I, I'm sorry, but that that's actually a deal breaker. And I had to tell him that. Like, straight up, mm -hmm. like, sex is a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry. I only live once and I love you to death. But if we can't get this sex thing under control, then mm -hmm. I have to bounce. Because there's someone else that will fuck me the way that I want to be fucked. Oh, my God. You did not say that. I pretty much said that. I mean, there's always somebody there's out always there for someone. everybody, and he knows I don't. I don't believe in soulmates. Yes. So it's like, no, I chose you because I love you, mm -hmm. but don't act like I can't find anybody else either. So yeah. that's appreciate me for who I am because I chose to be with you. Mm -hmm. Don't act like this is like a. I don't. I'm obligated to be with you because mm -hmm. I'm not. No. At all. And no. that happened after Dad died because once Dad died, like all of the perspective of life came in, and that happens to people all the time. Yeah. And I was like, uh, why am I worried about all this bullshit that's stupid? Like, I needed to just, like, one thing at a time type mm -hmm. deal started happening for me. And realizing, oh, yeah, we do only live once. Why am I doing stuff I don't want to fucking do? Well, and I mean, that goes along with having surgery, too. Yeah. It puts things into perspective of saying, like, okay, we only live once. Yeah. That's the whole point of doing this surgery so we can live. What, and that's why I had the surgery. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I don't want to be big anymore. This is really uncomfortable. This is not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Like, what is Dylan going to have to deal with, like, in 10 years? Like, his mom, like, diabetic, having to get shots and can't mm -hmm. move? Holy shit, this could be a thing. Like, look at my family history. Mm -hmm. It's not the greatest. No. Nope. Like, so I need to do something drastic. And, yeah, like, I'm so happy because, like, that's what changed everything for me. Like, the sex drive was 100% mm -hmm. different later on. And that's what was a conversation then again because it's, like, he got used to that sex drive. Post, you know, pre-op, pre-op, and then now there's a whole new sex drive. <laughs> but he's rolling with the punches, yeah. guys. He's rolling he with the punches. He totally is, and it's just like you have to talk, though. Mm -hmm. So my biggest thing about the sex thing is like, I know it might it's gonna feel uncomfortable when you say the things, mm -hmm. but once it's out and we'll watch their facial expression, it doesn't even face them. They no. just want to have sex too. Yeah, they don't care unless you're Kelly and don't have a sex drive. But I think if Cody was like, let's fucking have sex, you'd probably have sex. I would, but, and it's not that I wouldn't enjoy it, would enjoy it, it, but I mean, there was a lot of, there was a problem with, sorry if this is too much information, but there was a problem with like when we would have sex, like I enjoyed it, but I wasn't in it. Like it would hurt. Oh, that's because fun. no, like, and I would do it. I think a portion of you would do it because it's it's an obligation, right? Like, yeah. That's your you spouse. Wanna you want to please them, right? Yeah. And so I wouldn't say anything. Oh, no. Because, like, who wants to hear that their partner isn't turned on? Yeah. Like, that's not, that's also not a fun conversation to have. No. So I just lost the drive to, because once you're, like, once you have sex and it hurts. Yeah. Like, you don't want to do that again. So does it, it hurts every time? It hurt every time. Oh, no, Kelly. Like, post-op. Oh, no. Pre-op, there was no problem. Interesting. So, so I don't... vagina changed. My vagina changed along with surgery. That's interesting. Along with my stomach. Yeah, I don't know if I was just, like, mentally not... Like, I, you well, know, that whole mental thing of, like, I didn't find myself attractive, so how can he find that attractive? Right. And then it starts that whole, like, hamster wheel mm -hmm. going. And then you're, like, so in your head that you aren't turned on. Well, you're not in it. Yeah. Like, you're not in it at all. Mm -hmm. um, but you stopped taking a lot of your pills after surgery, right? Um, a few, but not, like, Was enough. Is there any, because I'm thinking about the pain part. Because if you didn't have pain prior and you have pain now with him. Well, it was more of like, again, being dry. Oh, okay. No, that pain. People want to hear that. Yep. That pain. So it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever had sex when you're trying to have sex when you're dry. But for women, that is not a fun feeling no. to have. No, he didn't just spit on it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> We've all had dry moments. But when Tell you me your don't... husband hasn't spit on it before. Oh, 100% okay. he has. But that was, like, that's the thing, is that I felt like I wasn't turned on. I wasn't having those 
but he just kept pushing it. Oh, and this, you know? it wasn't fun. No. Like, it wasn't a fun experience. Oh. And it's not that I didn't want to have sex. I wanted to have sex. Right. But you know being dry can be also a medical condition. You might have, like, some low levels of something. I probably do. Because, like, that's, that's the whole thing, like, with your skin being moisturized and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all tied to, like, all these minerals and the water intake that we get. So, like, that can be just be an, a mineral that you need. A mineral. A mineral. Like, seriously, it can be really simple. Or you just weren't turned on anymore. So, it's like, you have a lot of these things well, that could and, be. Yeah, and the conversation never happened. Like, I can't remember. Like, I thought about it in my head so many times. Like, just get lube. Yeah, like all the time. Why didn't we just get lube? Yeah, you one hundred percent could have just done that. Yeah, and it would have made it more enjoyable, which means I probably would want to have sex more often. Yeah, but neither one of us said it. Were you guys like nervous to say it? Like, well, did, I mean, did you ever think about getting lube and just didn't want to bring it up to him? Correct. Okay. So, again, the communication was not there because if you needed lube, you would just be like, Eric, go find, buy some fucking lube so we can I'd have be sex. like, hey, babe, I think we need lube. Right? That's what I'd be like. I'd just be like, I think we do. Like, Yeah. And he'd be like, yeah. Cool. Cool. Let's go get some. Yeah. So, I don't know why there was a, a communication breakdown when it came to sex. Yeah. But as I look back, we never really talked about it. I was like, like, like it was like the act was done. Go back to your normal life. It was like business. Not business, but it was like, it was, I mean, it was. It was a lot like business. Yeah. Yeah. It was just something that you checked off the box. You checked off the box that you had sex. Yeah. You're like, I did that this week. I had sex twice this week. Congratulations. Well, I am excited that you are done with that life and you can get some. Because I want to. Yeah. I want to find some people that, you know, because single Kelly she had sex. Yeah. Like, I always found somebody to have sex with. Like You did. <laughs> I mean, it might not always, always been pretty or... Oh, side story. Okay, guys. Which one do you want to tell? Um, So, I was sleeping with this guy. I, it was only... It was purely sex. Like, I literally... He would call me. I would go over there, like, after 10 o'clock at night have sex, and then I would bounce. Like, I was out. Like, I didn't want to have anything to do with him in, a, like, a relationship status. Like, it was yeah. purely just for sex, right? Yeah. So we have sex. And he sit, he, like, he's on top of me still. He's still in me. Okay. And he looks at me, and he's all, this is, like, a whole new beginning. Oh. Huh? That's amazing and hilarious. And... What do you say to that? I probably left skid marks with how fast I left. Oh, no. Because I was like. We're supposed to have sex. No, we had sex. No, but like that, this is all should only like be this sex. Like this though. should only be sex. Yeah, and but he, I mean, you have to at some point realize like when somebody only comes over after a certain point of time. Well, you can't help your feelers, though. No, like, but I mean. I mean, he probably knew that in his head, Kelly, and that's why he said something. Then obviously it didn't work, and God. then he's like, "Oh fuck, that like." So she really is only up for sex. Like that was a key noticeable thing. This is a whole new beginning. Yeah, you get to start all this all over. Oh yeah, no, no. I get to live through you. And that was the last amazing. time I I slept with him. Like I did not go back home. I know that. <laughs> nope, no, I'm good. No, nope, that's not happening. So is that what you want to be like again? No, no. Okay. I mean, I would like to have sex with somebody eventually yeah and i don't know i mean i i we don't have crystal balls we don't Does know the thought turn you on though to have sex with somebody else yeah knowing that you get to have sex with someone else um, you excited i mean it's exciting to yeah. like you know begin again and like find somebody that maybe i connect with more on a better level yeah um because that's the other thing is me and cody had been together for 12 years we yeah started dating I was 21 like yeah I I didn't know any different really yeah except for whatever you brought in that's it yeah and so it's I the prospect of finding somebody that maybe I connect with on a better level Mm -hmm. is very exciting that's awesome so I mean I'm excited I'm also nervous because I'm like 
oh, I have to have sex with somebody else. <laughs> you have to learn a whole new person. Yes. Yeah. But hopefully I can find somebody that takes the time to want to get to know me, not only as a person, but sexually too. Well, I think when it goes to this go around, that like, you definitely need to be upfront about the sex thing. Mm-hmm. And even just say, you can literally just be like, hey, I might tell you things about sex that I need, that I just need to tell you. So mm-hmm. just be prepared for that. And they'll probably be like, okay. All right, cool. All right. Do I still get sex? Yes. Okay, then great. Yeah, just be like, I will tell you if I have certain things. <laughs> well, because I think it's important. It's just so important because there are so many things that happened where if I had just spoken up. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he would have been receptive to that. Were you nervous or something that he would be? I don't think I brought up a lot of things. Yeah. Because I was nervous of how what the reaction would be. Not that it's, like, abusive or anything like that, but I just think I didn't want to deal with it. You and just, I think that was a lot of our relationship. Yeah, you did not want to tell... You didn't want to deal with the argument. So I brushed so it under the rug. you it. Or, yeah. Yeah. Brush it under the rug. Brush it under the rug. Let's not talk about it. Let's pretend like everything is hunky-dory. Well, now you know not to do that. Correct. So talk about sex with your next partner. Uh, I think definitely. It's going to be on the table. I think it's exciting to know that there are people out there that want to have honest conversations about yeah. sex and have, you know, like, like you said, I'm, I want to do this. I don't want to do this. Like. That is a deal breaker That's for me. That's a deal breaker. I do not want to do that. And it doesn't always have to be positions or anything. It just literally no. like, hey, like, I want to have sex every couple of days. Yes. You cool with that? Cool with that? All right. We're cool with yeah. that. Yeah. Then that's or all it needs to be. We haven't had sex in a week. What's going on? Yeah. Like, that was even a conversation we did not have. Oh, you didn't even have that one? Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. I'm sorry. That's frustrating. That's what I'm saying. Like, the whole sex conversation, no matter what was brought up into that. Yeah, because I think people need to learn, like, hey, uh, this is your body. You are made to do these things. So don't be ashamed of your body and how how you feel about it. Like, be open with it. Well, and here's the thing. Especially when you're married, you guys. For almost 10 years. Yeah. I read a lot of romance novels. Yes, you do. I like sex books. Yeah. I They're trashy novels. I know it. I love it. I look forward to the sex parts in those movies or in those books. Like, so the fact that I wasn't. Yeah. Like, I I feel like I am a sexual person and I just feel like sexually it was just not a connection. Well, then I'm glad that you're not in that anymore. So now yes. you can be your sexual being that you should be. Yes. Because I told Eric, I'm like. Because his reaction, you know, he was, like, afraid, like, I'm going to want it all the time. Because he doesn't have the, it's like, our sex drives don't meet. Mm-hmm. And that's normal. Like, yes. so, I don't know if you guys have done any research about, like, men when they, our peak times are different. Yes. So, guys peak in, like, late teens, early 20s. Women peak in their 30s. Okay. Which and that, and for them, it's flopped. Like, their libido goes down. Mm. So, it's, like, it's. And then it gets back up in, like, the 50s, and the women are down. So it's, like, we're never actually on the same wavelength. And that's why you need to talk. And that's why you need to talk. 100%. Because if you're not having sex for a week, like, if you you and Eric didn't have sex for a week, you'd be like, what's going on? Yeah, I go, hey, um, it's, it's been a week. This is literally what I do. It's just been a week. It's been a week. And he looks at me, he's like, yep, okay. Because, like, because now, guys, because you guys know... You, you're, you're listening to your body a lot. Yes. Right? So, like, you start getting in tune with how you feel mm-hmm. and what's happening and when it's happening. Mm-hmm. So, I, and it kind of makes me feel like an animal. <laughs> like, it kind of freaks me out sometimes because I feel like an actual animal because I, if I don't have sex before my period, I'm fucking angry. Because like, you know you can't have sex for another week. I can't have sex for, like, an almost a week. And I get, if I don't have it, like, a day or two before, I'm just like, fuck, man. I've seen her when she doesn't get it. She gets I do. I get a little, like, sassy. It's, like, sassy. a little sassy. Like, I'm just, like, short with with my jokes. Like, my jokes are landing harder. Like, it's just, like. They're, like, direct They're hits. direct hits. Yeah. <laughs> like, you feel it. So, oh that's God. the deal. It's, like, I, and so I had to tell him, I'm, like, hey, like. 
so we're like I'm really regular when it comes to my period so like you are um it's literally I cry one week before and that's how I know I'm like all right yeah, she gets very teary-eyed, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, it's coming. Yeah, Kelly knows. Because then she's like... And then I'm down about everything around me. Yes. I think that I suck at everything yep. for, and like, like Mal, work it. for, like, 24 or 48 hours. Yep. And then I'm like, okay, so period's going to be in a couple days. Yep. So we know, and so I'm telling, like, Eric's like, I already know. Like, so you, you literally just have to talk about your body more with your partner, mm-hmm. because they have no idea... And they can't. Well, yeah, they I mean, they're you not don't in know. Their body. You, well, exactly. Well, they are, <laughs> but they're not. Um, mentally, they are not in Until your body. Until they're in my body, they have to know what's going on <laughs> in my brain. That's a good rule, right? Until you are up inside me, <laughs> you don't get to go up inside me unless you understand my brain. Exactly. Well, I don't think anybody's really going to understand your brain. <laughs> no. No. Kind of I'm an amoeba. It's, it's you're like, amoeba. Is that what it's called? An amoeba. So it's where someone's like, a mis- you're mysterious. That is not an amoeba. Okay, then I don't An know. amoeba is part of science. Oh, it, it is, huh? I don't know. I feel like we might have to look oh, it up. Hold on. Hey, Siri, what is an amoeba? She never fucking works. You she know when w- she works with my TVs going off. Hey, Siri, what is an amoeba? An amoeba, often called an amoeboid, an amoeboid, is a type of cell or unicellular organism which yeah. has the ability to alter its shape primarily by extending and retracting pseudopods. Oh my God, is that perfect for this episode or what? Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, you are not an amoeba. I'm not an amoeba. No, figure that out. <laughs> so I will, when I know the, the word, I will tell you guys. Okay. Because Eric and my brother both called it, called me it. And I was like, yep, that's, that sounds about right. So, because yeah, like you don't know what's going to happen in this head. It's ridiculousness. Yeah. I mean, I know after surgery, I think a lot more. Yeah. And so I'm analyzing like, what do I actually feel about this? And we talked about this with the happiness episode, which, you know, you think about, okay, does this bring me joy? Does this bring me happiness? Does this person make me feel drained at the end of the day? Yeah. And I think that constant hamster wheel. Yep, the real going. It just goes and goes and goes and goes. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Yeah. Bunny. I feel like I, I questioned everything that first year or two, and that's what you're in. Yeah, I am, like, I'm almost to year two. Yeah, like you're figuring out your body. Mm-hmm. Like you're learning what everything, like, like the sounds and mm-hmm. the feelings are and, you know. Because it does take a while. Because I feel like that first year, you have no idea what the fuck's going on. We're most losing of the time. weight so rapidly, mm-hmm. and all you can focus on is water and protein. Well, and you know? losing weight, and just losing like all you care about is that scale or those inches. Yep, it you know? consumes you every yeah. single minute, every thought in your head for every minute, every hour of every day. Yeah, and that's probably like that's why I didn't take it. It took till the year one was over. For me to have, like, mm-hmm. I recognizing the body where I was like, oh, I want to have sex now. Yes. This is a weird feeling. <laughs> I feel like we should be able to just tell the person, like, and there was a few times where I was like, bedroom. Bedroom. Let's go. And so, I mean, like, I don't want it to sound like I never had good sex. Like, we we did have good sex. I think towards the end, though, we were both kind of You guys weren't into each other. No. No. We're feeling it. Nope. That makes sense. It's kind of sad, though. I mean... It is 100% sad. Like, you should be with somebody who makes you feel good Mm -hmm. and that you want to have sex with. Yeah, so side story about that. Yes. Remember the car ride with one of our friends and we talked about licking toes? Yes. (laughs) So it was really funny because I can't remember what she asked. But I was like, but if you, I, what I said to her was like, well, if you like, if you like him licking your toes and he should be able to do that, he's your husband. Just tell him. And she's like, oh my God. And I was like, well, like Eric's licked my toes. It's fucking amazing. But I don't ask him to do it all the time. But I didn't know that until he did it. <laughs> it just randomly happened. I mean, you can't really know until. You don't. You 100% oh don't. I forgot about that story. Yeah. And it's like, that's how like people are so insecure about sex and their bodies because like. We're told, like, really, we're told not to, like, 
But we are talk about it. Not we're not allowed to talk about it. And you're, we're always shamed because we've been bigger, so we've been mm -hmm. shamed and embarrassed. So I'm like, oh yeah, but I'm not used to where it's okay. Yeah, it is okay totally to talk okay. about it. Yeah. Yes. Which is why we named this, let's talk about sex. Yeah, because like we have needs and it's okay to have those needs. And whether you're male or female, I mean, you still, I mean, everybody has needs. Yeah. It's just finding somebody that aligns with those needs mm -hmm. and that you feel comfortable. Because I think that's another thing is finding somebody you feel comfortable enough to have that conversation. Yeah. 100%. Because, because if you don't feel comfortable with them, you're not going to have that conversation. No, not at all. And you have to have the conversation to find out if you are comfortable. Because mm -hmm. I assumed 100% that Eric was going to be like standoffish mm -hmm. um, and just be like like a turnoff. Because mm -hmm. like some guys don't like you, like you be the aggressor yes. or you, have, you start in the conversation about it. Like they want to be the ones. And it's like... But I, if you're not doing it... Well, and I waited. I've waited long enough. And I was like, he's like... This is not a problem for him, so I need to tell him. Because then, like, his question was like, not question, but he's like, "This is a this is your problem." I go, "Yep." And since we're married, it's now your problem. <laughs> well, and not only that, but how are they supposed to know it's a problem until you bring it up? Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm very much learning mm -hmm. over the last month. How are we supposed to know that it's a problem unless it is talked about? Oh, yeah, and it's that same old saying like, "We're not mind readers." We aren't. I know it sounds dumb, but we really, really aren't. Like, you can know a person really well and kind of have an idea of what they're thinking. Like, I know I can look at you across the room and know. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Eric. Like, there's certain people you can do that with, but it's not all the time either. No. Like, I mean, you're not going to know them 24-7. Like, it's just not going to happen. Well, no, that's why, like, random people commit suicide. Like, mm -hmm. even with this weight loss journey, people commit suicide because... Mm -hmm they can't handle the, the new, like, attention they're getting. Mm. That's why they have these psych tests that we have. So it's like, yeah, we're in our heads all day long. We're only with ourselves all day long. So you need to express it and tell someone when you need anything, whether that's mm -hmm. just, like, someone to talk to you mm -hmm. or if you need to have sex. Like, hey, by the way, my body has changed. Yes. And it's like, it's been fun because like now you can do a lot more things like that belly don't get in the way guys anymore. Yeah, no. Those thighs don't get in the way anymore either. And I didn't realize that thighs were a thing until my thighs were gone. And I was yes. like, oh, okay. Like I can wrap my whole body around you. Mm -hmm. Like I can do like a pretzel around him. There's no belly. There's no thighs. Like, yeah. While, while you're inside of me, this is crazy. Like. Never thought that was going to be possible. I feel like we should make this a drinking game. Every time Melody says, while you're inside me. Take a shot. Take a shot. <laughs> take a shot of water. Or, or protein. protein. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make it healthy. <laughs> um, but it's just those things you never would have thought. Like, mm -hmm. like that was really cool. That was like a, a non-scale victory mm -hmm. that I didn't know that I, I wanted or needed or was ever going to happen. Like, yeah. I didn't even register. I was like, oh, this is rad. This is rad. Yeah, I this love it. Oh, my God. So I can't wait for you to have some of those. I think I'm definitely going to have some once I start dating. Yeah. Having sex. Because yeah. eventually, yes, it will happen. I Not right now. I'm, I don't think it's needed. No. Obviously. Like, if you don't even have the sex drive, then don't even worry about it. Yeah. You know? No, there's not really. I feel like I just need to get through this divorce, get moved, start figuring out school, all of that stuff, because I feel like once, I feel like that's another thing. <laughs> Follow me on this. See if you can. I'm starting this new path in my life mm -hmm. of like, I want to go back to school. I want to do certain things. I want to travel. And I feel like until that's completed, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be ready to be That's with somebody else. Because you're finding yourself. And I want to be able to be financially independent. And I also want to be independent all in itself. Right. Like, I want to be able to, if I want to buy a car, I want to be able to go and buy a car. Like, I don't want to have to wait for somebody's approval mm -hmm. or permission to or do money. anything. Or money. That's the deal. Mm -hmm. So you want to be financially and mentally independent. Correct. Before you date mm -hmm. someone. I think yes. that's perfect. Well, and just like the small like things that. of like, 
I'm going to Melanie's tonight. We're recording. I don't know what time I'm going to be home. Not like, a problem. It's not a problem because I don't have anybody questioning whether I am working on podcast stuff mm -hmm. or if I am, like, they have no interest in my life. Right. So I don't have that problem anymore. No, it's probably freeing, I would imagine. It is a little freeing. It's sad. Like, the whole... I think it's a, the loneliness like it's it can be lonely. It can be very lonely. But it's freeing because you can do whatever you want whenever you want. Mm -hmm. So like if there is a person that we were like, hey, you can go fuck that person by the way if you wanted to, and she was like, her face like it was really funny because she was like, oh wait, I can. I definitely one hundred percent can have sex with anybody that I want to have. Yeah. Like I definitely will wait until my marriage is, the divorce is final. Yeah. Because I don't feel like that needs to be. That doesn't need to be added in. No. But also, like, you have goals. Like, you want to have, you want to be physically, you want to be financially and mentally stable, like, independent before you do anything. Right. So that's going to be after everything's signed. And, I mean, that's something that we talked about in the Zoom um, Patreon meeting. Yeah, which we do Saturday. once a month. We do once a month if you're a patron meeting, or a, a patron meeting. <laughs> if you're a patron, um, but one of our patrons was talking about how just take care of it yourself. Yeah, I was going to get to that. Like, one of my girlfriends, because, like, I was telling her the conversation I was having with Eric, and mm -hmm. she's like, you might have to learn your own body. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you might have to just do this yourself. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. And I was like, ah, shit, she's right. Like, oh, but I just don't want to. Like, I'm just like, it's fine. It's just like, I have my, you know, I have my penis. Like, I don't, okay. don't want to have to use anything, but I get it. It's there. It, it totally probably works. Yep. And, uh, yeah, like, you're going to have, you might have to do some stuff yourself. I mean, I haven't since this whole, I mean, it's been a while. But, I mean, definitely. I mean, there's sometimes, like, you just have to take care of yourself. Yeah. And I feel like that's where you need to, like, you need to start figuring that out. I, I think if I had, like, a door that locked, there might be some helpful. But also, like understand this this is my this is me rationing everything rationalizing everything okay is he's home all of the time so here's the thing am i gonna be pleasuring myself or be pleasuring with my partner and that's the deal is like eric's here all the time guys like legit i'm the one that leaves a do overnights mm -hmm. so <laughs> like that's where i spend it at like kelly's house or emily's house mm -hmm. or whatever like so he's never gone so I'm like, why? Why am I? He's in the other room. <laughs> yeah, but if he's not, if if he's not feeling it, I so know. like, I know, you I know, it. before your period, if he's not feeling it, be like, I need to get off. That's so true. this is what's gonna happen. You know, that's accurate. I could totally do that. Yeah, I feel like there's nothing wrong with making sure that your needs are met. Yeah, whether that is, I mean, because you could also bring toys into like. Oh, into the actual... Yeah, into yeah, a yeah, bedroom yeah. and with your partner. But I think there's some times where it's like, I know what I need to get off. Yeah. And you and this is not aligning right now. So I need to be able to just take care of myself. Oh, 100%. That would be fine. I think that's... It's a very healthy attitude. And I don't think it's... Like the, the guys that think that it's like cheating if you get yourself off. No. Wait, guys think that? There's some guys that think like you're they're not... They look down on that. Oh, wow. Because it's not with them. Interesting. I know, I've i not heard of this. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I've only met and known men that are totally stoked if you do it yourself. And they want to huh. watch you well, do it yourself. Yeah, I, can, sure. I can understand the whole watching thing. Yeah. But, yeah, there's some guys that are like, it's considered cheating if you touch yourself without me there. Oh, wow. That's some, some control issues. My um, so how about we not be with those fellas? Yes. Or those types of people. Yes. That is not cool. But then that's another conversation that you can have. Yeah. Is you have to have that. There's some times where I want to get off. You're not around or you don't feel in the mood. So I'm going to get myself off. Yeah. And don't be mad at me for that. Yeah. It's my body. Cool. Do my thing. I'll let you know. Like, there's no reason to, like, sneak around about it. Well, not even that. Like, I don't think I... Eric's never told me when he's masturbated. Like, I don't need to know that. Um, like, 
he's a, he's a man and he just does it yeah. when he does it. So I'm not going to tell him when I do it. I might tell him afterwards, but like, hey, guess what I just did? Because <laughs> that's our dynamic. Like, we are just yeah. goofballs. We, like, that's how, that's actually how I've been able to be more, um, be able to communicate more is because mm-hmm. I do very playful. Yeah. It, it's not aggressive. It's very calm. Mm-hmm. It's just like, hey, man. <laughs> But he, that matches his mood. Uh-huh. Like, you guys play off of each other. Yeah. Because you both are goofballs. Mm-hmm. So, it, if you had a, you would, I mean, you wouldn't be with somebody that I, wouldn't match that, but. I don't think so, no. Yeah. I just couldn't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I think I would like you for a hot minute, and then I'd be like, no, you're not worth the time. Be like, are you hot? Yes. Do you have a crappy, crappy attitude? Yes. Mm. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. I might play with you for a while. <laughs> I might play. I might bat you around and play with you. That's but like your guy that you had when you were younger. It was like, we're just oh, in yeah. and out. We're just like, this is clockwork. Yeah. That's this what was they would like, be like. Yeah. Because nope. No. I might play with you for a little bit. That was, I mean, but that was all of my relationships mm-hmm. before Cody was I literally played with you for a little bit. I got what I wanted and then I was done. Yeah. I mean, really. And here's the thing that you actually told him that, like, you were pretty upfront about, like, your needs and what you're expecting out of this um, situation. So yes. that's also a deal. Like, you used to communicate just fine. Yeah. So. Um, but I also was way more independent. You were, 100%. You were in full control of that. Mm-hmm. So. Like, which, I had a job. I had, like, I had other things going on in my life. And then I went through a period where. I didn't have anything going on in my life. Mm -mm. And now I'm having things go on in my life again. And I want somebody that compliments that. Oh, absolutely. Like, that you you have things going on. That you want to be out doing stuff. Like, Yeah, it's we're not, like, because that's the one thing with me and Eric. Like, we are two individuals mm -hmm. that hang out. Like, and that's, people are, I've I've heard this and it drives me nuts. It's like, well, he lets me be like that. Excuse me? Let's. Let you do what? Be you. Do the things that you want to do. Like, I, I will check in with Eric and be like, hey, like, these are the things that mm-hmm. I want to do. Does this conflict with anything? And then he'll be like, no, that's no, no problem. All right, cool. Like, yeah. But then if there is a problem, then you I talk know. about it. That, exactly. exactly. Like, I, want, I need this to not happen. Or I need more communication when this happens. Mm-hmm. Like... There's a very clear cut of, like, this is what I didn't like about this situation. Yeah. Well, and I like when Eric goes out and do and does things. Yeah. Without me. It's like, nice being alone sometimes. Well, and I just like hearing the stories when he gets back. I'm just like. Yeah. I like not knowing already what's happened, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we are together all the time, and we have a great time together. But also, I, I do enjoy Eric's storytelling. And so, yes. I want to hear some stories. He does have good stories. Yeah, he has great stories. And, like, yeah, entertain me. Tell me a story, like, mm-hmm. something I don't know. It's awesome. Like, go have fun with your friends. Yeah. You know? Go I think try there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Go. As long as you're being truthful and honorable. Yeah. Go. Have a good time. See yeah. you later. Like, I don't ever think... About, like, cheating with Eric. Mm -hmm. I have never thought of him with any other person. Mm -hmm. And that was the same way with Cody, too. Like, we didn't think, like, that was going to be a thing. Um, But, yeah, like, you know, you don't think those things. So you automatically, like, as long as you don't think those things, Mm -hmm. then you're totally fine with them doing whatever they want. Yeah. Because that's the deal, that you had the trust. Like, Eric trusts me, I trust him. That's why... For those, oh, I'll tell you, I got an unsolicited dick pic, everybody. Oh, my God. Melanie. And then I sent it to Kelly. (laughs) She fucking sent it to me. And all I see, like, because when on your, on our phones, like, it'll just pop up. Like, (laughs) (laughs) that's what she said. (laughs) Um, No, it just said, I got my first dick pic. Yeah. And so I went in to respond and I swiped down and there's a big fucking dick just hanging out on my oh, phone. It was gnarly. It oh, was my. massive. And that, it, it was not that, like, that was not that person. Oh, I don't care who it was. <laughs> I was just like, holy shit. It was shit. angry at the world, It people. was just so funny because that's this is our relationship. I get this, I'm working, and then I get this message from this dude and it just says, like, hi, how are you? Dick pic. Do you like? 
And I was like, holy shit. Like, it was literally coming in that way. It wasn't even That's just, what like, she said. <laughs> it wasn't like there was pauses. It's like, I didn't even have time to reply to this person. Like, oh, my God. And so I ran out to Eric, and I told him. I was like, holy shit, look. And so I made him look at the dick pic. <laughs> and he laughed so hard. And then the guy was calling. I was trying to do a Facebook video message with me. Oh, my god. And gosh. I'm like panicking to, to hit decline and then I block him and Eric's like oh my god and I was like that's my first unsolicited dick pic I don't know what to do like you need to know <laughs> like because that's our rules like just tell like because of the podcast I know you I don't know if you are or not but like I'm getting random messages oh yeah from all the time yes and so like I don't want him to think that like I'm doing anything's anything. going on yeah. yeah so I show him everything yeah and it's funny because like one of the guys was messaging me and I said like not interested I'm married and then he was like oh sorry wait are you happily married dot 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 lol and I showed Eric the whole thing and he's like what a douche and I was like yeah like but I wanted to see like there's no messages from me this is it's funny that you respond sometimes I do because I don't don't even respond like I'm just delete 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 because half the time they're just not even like real people I mean yeah, I guess they're not. I don't. I don't ever think about it that way. Like, I'm like there was one that messaged us, and wasn't it like it was a sugar daddy one? Yeah, and then it was it's like his profile picture was um, Steve Jobs. Oh, it was so funny. Like, she's all, like, isn't this Steve Jobs? And I was like, what? what? Yes, it is. So you have to be completely an idiot to respond to something yeah. like that. But it's just interesting. Like, I would have never gotten a dick pic post like pre op. Like you would have. I've never gotten one. That was well. I never got. I got one from Melanie, but <laughs> other than that. But that's the thing is, like, ever since the surgery and losing all the weight, you get more attention. Mm-hmm. And that was also a conversation that me and Eric had to have. I'm like, hey, I'm getting attention from other people. Mm-hmm. I kind of like it, and I didn't know I was gonna like it until it happened. Mm-hmm. Well, it's nice when you get attention. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, I mean, when people compliment you, especially when you are starved for attention. Well, like, not even starving it if you just never got attention. Well, yeah, that's so what I'm saying. Like, like, it's, like it's just so surprising. You're just like, oh, someone cares? Oh, that's weird. Okay. Like, oh, oh, this is because I I'm pretty. And the only reason why I say starve is I didn't want to say starving attention because I've never craved someone else's attention. But you didn't know. But once I got it, I was like, oh, that is really interesting. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Like, I didn't think that I was attractive to where, like, someone wants to, like, come over and talk to me and now they're buying me stuff like this is really weird like Mm -hmm. never had attention like that before or I like it was really funny I went to this party and all of a sudden like I just walked in with Eric and when I went to go get a drink every all of a sudden like four guys were like what kind of drink do you want what are you gonna have tonight and I was like what's going on guys like there's like four gentlemen around me that I'm like I've never been flocked to. That was like flocked to. Yeah, it was nuts. Oh, like that feeling oh was God. great. But I also told Eric, I'm like, I'm getting messages. You have to be open because I was like, Hey, I'm liking this. Mm-hmm. I need you to step up your attention game. Yeah, step it I up, need dude. You to step it up. And he's just like, Okay, because like, I'm very honest with. And that's mm-hmm. also, I will give some credit to my mom on this one, because mm-hmm. like when Dad passed, that was the one thing she said. She's all, You have to communicate, 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 and you. Can't take your partner for granted. Mm-hmm. She's like, you have to appreciate them. So those are the two things that I can give you from this experience. Because my mom and my dad were married almost for 30 years. Yeah, they were together for they a long time. They were together for time. a long time. And they've been through all of the things that you can probably mm-hmm. think about. But, yeah. like, that was the thing. Is like, hey, also, if you don't like this person, you don't have to be with them. Like, it was mm-hmm. all these, like, realizations of, like, okay, so if I tell these per, I figured... And as a mom, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, if I at least tell this my partner everything, mm-hmm. and if they if they can't do it, then at least I, it shows that I tried. Yeah, I wasn't the one that wasn't willing to to do all these things. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, I want to communicate with you because I want to be with you. I love you. You're the father of my of my son. Mm-hmm. You guys are amazing together. But I I also have needs, so I have to tell you these things. Yeah. And if you can't meet these needs, then that way Dylan can see as growing up, like, hey. If your needs aren't being met, vocalize them. And if you don't like it, then you can go to, like, there are other options. Yeah. I'm not always saying the grass is green on the other side. All I'm saying is put all your whole body into the relationship and be Try honest. Try your hardest. Try your hardest. But if it's not working, it's not working. Yeah. And know where you're in. Talk to yourself. I had to figure out what was my line. My mm-hmm. line was sex. Mm-hmm. My line was like, hey, man, I, I need it. I want it. I'm getting attention. Give I'm, it to me I've now. never had this attention before. It's amazing. <laughs> 
And it's really weird knowing that I could have sex with someone else that isn't my husband. Because before I never thought I could. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, I totally can. Mm -hmm. And Eric's like, yeah, I have, what was it he said, like two weekends ago, he was all, I am not blind to see that there are other men that would swoop right in if I was gone. And I was like, yeah, 100%. The fear. The fear yeah, is the fear present. Is there. And it's like, I don't, I'm not threatening, like, hey. If you, no, not at all. But it's very, like, hey, like, just understand, like, these are. These well, are that's, things. The, I mean, I feel like that goes back to, you know, having masturbation time. Like. Yeah. If your partner's not going to give it to you, there are other options. Yeah, just please yourself. Yeah. Like, it's totally fine. Like. And it's funny because it's a very big stigma more around women than it is mm-hmm. men. Because, like, yeah, like, I would never think, I would never second guess a man masturbating. And I'd be like, yeah, that, that happens probably five times a day. I don't know. Like, it's... Hey, in your house alone. It's like, it's it's insane. Like, especially when you have a 14-year-old, you don't ever want to question what's happening. No. So, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and then actually talking to Eric about that. Like, how was it when you were, like, a teenager? Mm-hmm. Understanding, like, these are just natural things that need to happen. Like, Christina P., I love her. Okay, go to her. It's um, your mama's house. It's Christina P., and it's all of it's, it's called Where Your Mom's At. She's so fucking funny. Because she's a comedian and has two kids, and she's just like, yeah. If I just watched this last one, she said that I realize it's 72 hours. I have to at least have sex with my husband every 72 hours. That mm-hmm. keeps everything in motion. Like, he's super nice. She's like, last time we did it, he just went and got my car cleaned. No questions asked. Just random shit just happens around the house. Because huh. we're having sex on a constant basis. And I know 72 hours. And she calls it milking. Remember I told you about oh, her? Oh, that's right. She calls it like you need to milk your husband. And I was like, it's so disgusting to call it that, but it's hilarious. But right? it's true. But you on the other side, it's like as a woman, like so do we. Mm-hmm. So do we. And that's the thing. I was like, mine is almost every 72 hours. Like I am totally in line with mm-hmm. that motion. So I, I get it. And it's like, hey, it's okay. But, like, girls can masturbate. It's totally fine. Yes. Uh, we're all sexual beings. Yeah. Like, every single one of us. Well, and we're meant to procreate. So it's yeah. like, there's a reason why we're supposed to have sex. So it, there's a reason why the drive's there. Mm-hmm. Like, understand, like, that's naturally just in your body. Mm-hmm. So don't be ashamed of it. No. I used to be kind of like, like, I thought, like, I was like, am I a nympho or something? Like, Eric seems to act like I want to have sex all the time. But really, it's just, like, compared, like, I, there's so many different levels mm-hmm. of a person of, like, what their needs are. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, oh, like, his level of what he wants is way different than mine. But we would have known that if we didn't talk about it. And then I know other couples that, like, someone went once at three times a day. And it's like, I couldn't even keep up with that. Like, no, there's no way. I like sex as much as I like sex. There's n- No, I could not handle Three times a day and my vagina be raw. Like, that's not happening. Yeah. And for hours. No. No. I don't need hours, guys. I'm just like. You're like, I need tops. 15 minutes. Let's get this in. Get it out. Get a good, solid 15, right? Yeah. I feel like 15, 20 minutes. I feel like that's good. You can get all the points. I I would honestly be okay with three times a week. Yeah. I feel like that's not too too much to ask. Mm Mm-mm. We all have lives. We all have, you know, other things going on. Mentally, it's hard to connect sometimes. But, yeah. Well, and if you, what I noticed with the touch thing. Mm -hmm. So, hey, guys, this is like a pro tip. When you tell your partner you want just touches, even if it's just holding hands, legs on each other, they want to fuck you more. Because they're touching you. Yeah. And, like, realizing, like, oh, I'm touching you. Oh, we can have sex now. Mm -hmm. Like, that goes hand in hand. Mm-hmm. So, and so it's not, and then they're on the other side of it wanting it. Mm-hmm. And then they're, they're the ones that engage in it. So it's not always me. Cause that was a thing too. It was like, I feel like I'm always the one, mm-hmm. the aggressor in the relationship for the sex part. And it's like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that. You want to feel like it's both sides. Yeah. Like 100%. he wants it as much as you want it. Mm-hmm. But you also know that you are you have a higher sex drive than yeah. he is. Especially with the working out guys, like I don't know where you're at in your journey with your workouts, but like that's like all of a sudden like you have like your endorphins are going like crazy mm-hmm. and your libido just spikes mm-hmm. because you feel good. You naturally feel good. So you're yeah. gonna want to have sex more. Yeah. Like it's just gonna happen. That's that's and, very accurate. And you can also be the flip side of the coin of like Kelly where it's like you're trying to find your body out mm-hmm. and then you don't feel attractive. 
So you have to deal with that. Yes. Have no libido. Yes. But you also need to tell your partner that you're not having a libido and it's not them because I know with Eric, I would take it a lot on myself. Mm-hmm. I would think that, oh, it's because I'm fat. Oh, he doesn't love me anymore. Oh, I'm not attractive. But really, it's just because his libido's down. Yeah. And you can fix that. Like, we are very chemical beings. Like, we can mm-hmm. fix almost any chemical in our We're body. We're <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, my God. All right. I think... You think we covered all the bases? I think we color... That's bad. I think we covered all of the basics. Okay. I think... Is there anything you want to add about body dysmorphia or... No, I think just, you know, like you said, be aware that you have to talk. The communication has to be on point yeah. or... I guess... Just get be, divorced. I think that's the deal is like not even for like even single couples. It's just like be honest with yourself mm-hmm. about what, what you want. like. Yeah. What you want. Yeah. Because there, there's no kink shaming. I am not a kink shamer. You do what you want, whatever you want. Yeah. And that's your damn, that's your own personal being. If you find someone that wants to do that with you, mm-hmm. awesome. Fucking cool. Yeah. But like, yeah, don't shame other people and their kinks and what they want to do. Like, yeah. And then you won't feel shamed, and then you feel more comfortable. So just be honest about what you like. Yeah. Because you'd be surprised. Like, when people like you, like, they'll do stuff. They'll do whatever, like, things. Yeah. Then they they don't, and they won't find it weird, Mm -hmm. and they won't be, like, shameful towards you. They'd be like, oh, cool. Like, they're into something. And then it might actually open up gates to, like, what they're into as well. Correct. So. Hopefully it's not. Too far down the road. Too far down the road. It's whatever your tolerance is. Yeah. So, I mean, really, I don't know. (sighs) Because, like, again, Christina P. on that show, what a, and why I talk about, like, no kink shaming is because, like, this person, all they want is their partner to just put their feet in, like, dirty things. Like, like the dirt worms where worms are around. Like, it's just random shit, but it's, like. Sorry, that's weird. It is. Well, it's, it's their thing. Like, that's what they like is watching their toes be and stuff. Like, jello, whatever, chili, I don't know. Like, chili? <laughs> Chili? That's where your mind goes? I mean, no, that's just what they were talking about. Like, oh. I'm just naming off stuff that <laughs> oh, wow. they would have to put their feet into. I mean, no, no. So I'm just saying. Judgment over even here. Even in this person's situation, they were comfortable enough to tell their partner what they wanted. And they were like, sure, down. That's not going to make me leave you. Like, because of I love all of the other things mm. about you. Like, that's not going to make me go like, peace. Like, if you have an 80% awesome person, take the 80%, mm. guys. That's all I'm going to say about that. Because uh, no one's I 100%. Like it. No, nobody's 100%. No. And that's why we are, you need to have friends mm. and you need to have some hobbies. Yep. Because you kind of get those other percentages from everybody else. Yes. So I would agree with that. Yeah. I think that's, I think that covers everything. Yeah. So thank you for hanging out with us <laughs> while we talk you. about sex. Appreciate um, it. Send us what you think or if you have any input yeah on if this you want to add to it if we need to have a part two let us know yes because um, we're Melanie's down. always down to talk about ask sex. all the questions that yeah because we might have to do a part two once I start dating yeah because like I know that I don't have a lot of loose skin mm-hmm. and I know that's a factor with other people when they have sex mm-hmm. and we've asked some people but they haven't mm-hmm. gone like deep into it yes so that's what she said so maybe like if anybody is She's willing, me at this point. <laughs> I just keep going. Um, if anybody's out there that has an experience with loose skin is willing to talk about it, that'd be really awesome. Message yeah, us, definitely, because we don't know what it feels like. But I feel like that's important for our followers and our listeners to hear because that's going to be a factor for people. Yep. So I think so too. Loose skin is a fucking deal. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, yes, it is. So, all right, all right. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us, and we will see you in the next episode. That's right. Bye. Bye. You got your sex episode. Are you happy? I think it was well. Yours didn't hurt as bad.